ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் ஹவு ஆர் வி கோயிங் டு கெட் ரெடி ஃபார் த பிக் டே தட் இஸ் தி டே வேர் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு ரன் தி லோட்டஸ்ட் ஸோ பிஃபோர் தேட் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு வெல்கம் யூ ஆல் டு அவர் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் இஃப் யூ ஹாவ் நாட் சப்ஸ்கிரைப் யட் ப்ளீஸ் டூ சப்ஸ்கிரைப் டு அவர் சேனல் லைக் comment your questions and feedback in the comment section and before that i would like to thank everyone for your huge support for all these videos on my day to day performance testing videos where we have crossed almost 5 6 7 8 days and today we are in the ninth video on this series in case if you have missed the videos please do check the playlist and watch all the videos and today so so far let's have a quick quick recap on what we did in all these previous days so in our first phase we have gone through the identifying the test environment and then in phase 2 we have gone through identifying the performance test metrics and then in so this is the most critical and the most important scenario where we have designed or where we have worked on planning and designing the performance test so there is one more thing so the reason which i'm going back and forth with every phases of performance testing is i do not want you to miss any of these factors so that's the reason i'm going back and forth and please do check all these things and never ever miss anything in your performance testing because we are not just testing the performance it is in fact giving the value to the business so never make any mistakes or never miss anything please do add everything that add value to your testing so in this phase we have discussed about what are all these scripts that we are going to add as part of the testing and then we have decided the in scope and out scope and we should make sure that we are getting sign off within this phase and then we have discussed about what are all the resources that we are going to monitor and then we have discussed about the workload modeling in this video in this part and then we discuss we decide on what are the test types we are going to test and then what are all the protocols we are going to test and everything like when do we start the test and how do we go through the test even we have discussed about the effort estimation and then in phase 4 we start discuss about configuring the test environment and then in phase 5 so in fact i have completed all the scripts so let me just cover this so i have completed all these scripts so in case if you are working in your team just make sure you complete all these so if you have a team of 2 to 3 to 4 people just make sure that every script is been completed by every one of them before you are ready for the day for the load test so make sure everything is completed and everything is tested so let's just have something like validate in the integration because it's not like everything will be running in a separate phase so everything has to be tested so let me just make it as integration testing so we'll have to integrate all the scripts all the scripts in one single place and we have to do an integration testing for all these scripts so that we can make sure that everything works fine because there are chances where we might be creating some parameter files in a different location and when we export it to a different machine for running or doing a testing we might miss it so we have to make sure that everything works fine in the machine that we are going to test so we have to pass this integration testing and then we'll have to run a smoke test with all these scripts so with that we'll move to the jmeter so here we could see so let me show you what are all the things i have completed so here initially in our in our previous video you have you have seen just only one of these um script but after that i have completed all these scripts which is shopping fish shopping dog shopping reptiles shopping cats shopping birds add to cart login logout and search transaction so in fact these are planned already so all these scenarios there are eight scenarios and here we have clearly explained what are all these scenarios so scenario 1 is shopping fish so let me just restore it here scenario 1 is shopping fish 
Scenario two is shopping dog. Scenario three, three comes shopping re reptiles. Scenario four, shopping cats. Scenario five is shopping birds. Scenario six is log in, log out. And scenario seven comes the add to cart. And scenario eight is search. And that is again an API script which we, we have seen. How did we create this in one of our previous videos? So far, we saw about how did we do all these. So when it comes to naming the transactions, it's not very simple. It's in fact quite a complex task because right from your thread group we have to make sure that we have set proper transaction name so here you can see so i have defined it as scenario one and the scenario one is shopping fish and under that and when we come to the transactions so here we can see the transaction controller is named as zero one underscore zero one so this is scenario one and under scenario one, this is the script one, the, sorry, the step one. And then again, when it comes to the next step, so this is again scenario one or script one. And this is step two in the script one. And same way here, it's script one, scenario, uh, sorry, this step three. So same way it is, it, it goes on like it's script one. And then we have gone to the step four, step five, step six, step seven, step eight, step nine, step ten. So this way, we will have to define each and every step separately so that we can identify which steps goes where. So that when we are preparing the performance test summary report, we will we can easily identify them like what goes where and what is the response time of each of these scripts and that's the scenario and that's the reason so in fact this comes to all these scripts so here you can see this is in scenario 2 where i have created 0 2 which stands for scenario 2 or script 2 and then the step 1 so it's it comes to everywhere it's not only the transaction controller even we will have to rename it to the http request why so here so the same way i'm defining every other step and make sure that we do not miss any other steps like don't have a step such as 0 5 and then just have it as 7 so don't miss any numbers because that might bring unnecessary confusion because someone who sees this might be looking for 5 and then the next one has to be 6 but instead if you are renaming it uh, you are naming it as 7 so that particular step will be missed and then when it comes to the next step so here so we have completed so we can just go through all these scripts here like we have completed every script with the same set so the, you should follow a same set of format the same set of format because this will help us to identify or will help us to easily bring down the transactions during the testing uh, testing analysis in the report so yeah, i'll just go through all these scripts and will show you so here is how i have defined so here you can see six seven six script and here is seven script and this seven script uh, this is login and logout so i'm just doing a login in this script and then i'm going to the logout so in fact I'm, i have disabled all these other transactions but here you can see this is three and then the last transaction is four so same way we will have to make sure that we are not missing any other transactions so that's part one and we have to follow the same set of format and then when it comes to the next step which is checking the parameters in all the scripts so make sure you do not miss any parameters say for example here for click on sign in and for the credentials part so i'm using different credentials just make sure you're using different credentials for every script so here i have used four for the script four and when it comes to five i am using uh, oh sorry supposed to use five so yeah this is how we will have to do multiple checks just make sure that you check multiple times before every just that, that's the reason i have created you the checklist just make sure that you come across this checklist because in some sometimes we might be doing it so see you can see here. So in some scripts i have done it but in some scripts i have missed it so make sure you just come this you just go through back and forth every time because this spending time here is actually easy and it it will be like taking less time but when it, when it you run the script and because people will be waiting for the results and when you run the scripts and if the results go wrong or if the results go 
in a different manner which is not an expected wave so we might be already in a rush or we might be already in a pressure to release the results and when it goes wrong so we might not know where exactly it happened so that's the reason i have created this checklist please do follow this checklist because this will help you to in fact eliminate 99 percent of your manual mistakes that we do in assembling the scripts in making any integration during the scripts and then the checking correlation so in case if you are adding any correlation please do check whether you do not miss any correlations in any of these scripts in that way we can avoid as i told you we can avoid most of the mistakes almost 99 percent of the mistakes in the testing or in the scripting so let me just restore all the scripts i'll just collapse everything and then okay so now we are ready with all these scripts and now so just to confirm so what i will do I, i normally do is i just run each and every script first individually and just check whether everything works fine so this is for every individual script so by this way so when we just check everything we will have to go through each and every step and make sure everything works fine and this is a very basic thing so which is let me just add the step so it is test each individual script and make sure it is passed so okay i'm just i'm sorry i've just kept everything ready let me stop the test clear it so let me so yeah again this is one thing which i have to tell you so when you are validating the script so this is very important when we are validating the script we will need to test each individual script and never ever run it like a load test because when we are running it as a individual script writing the script when we are running the script individually only then we can find if there are any issues in the script where, where else when we are running everything at the same time we might not be able to understand that what exactly is happening or where exactly is the issue coming so the first step is running each individual script and yeah anyways you're going to run an integration test integration smoke test as a next step but still running individual script like validating the script individually is very important so let's run a quick validation so as i told you so these are some of the things which we might miss so what i normally do is i'll just create a checklist kind of things and i'll keep it i'll just make sure i follow all these things and i might not do any mistakes and these checklists did not come at just one point of time because after multiple mistakes and multiple errors i have did during my testing and all these process i have identified and i have finalized all these things and in fact there are always chances of improvement and in case if you have or if you find anything that you need to improve you can you are always feel free to add them but make sure that you document that in queue note it down because that will help you to avoid any mistakes in your future so let's wait for a few more seconds to see so just we can see here so we can see so this is the right user that i wanted to log in and this is the item which i wanted to pick so this is click fish so yes so the item is added right and then i'm adding to the i'm going to the cart okay so i'm adding the right thing and then when i'm going to the check box check out so yes everything goes fine so just che- check it's it's always good to check everything each thing individually and make sure that everything works fine and here you can see so yes so you've got everything so and so the last steps everything works fine so let's stop the script so same way we'll have to identify we'll have to run all these script and just make sure that everything works fine so this step is completed we'll just update this in our phase 5 so integration testing so this is, i'm just showing you for an example so just tested so if you just tested it just note it down that everything is tested ready and everything is ready just make marking it as tested so that we will not be or we are not required to come back again and just check it whether it is tested or not so just make sure that everything is tested and then let's do a 
smoke test. So what is a smoke test? So why do we need to run a smoke test? So in fact, a smoke test is a quick test that is performed to verify whether our system is stable and can handle the expected load. In fact, the purpose of the smoke test is to detect major issues that could prevent the system from functioning properly during the actual performance test. And I hope you understand. So this will prevent the system from functioning properly during the, sorry, you could identify the major issues that could prevent the system from functioning properly during the actual performance test. In fact, during the smoke test, a small number of users or requests are simulated to ensure that our system is able to handle them without crashing or without any uh, any identifying or experiencing any critical issues. In fact, this test is typically done before a full-scale performance test to ensure that the system is ready to handle the expected load. So if the smoke test that we are doing now is successful, the performance testing can be proceeded with confidence that the system is stable enough to handle the expected load. And if the system fails or if the smoke test fails, the further investigation and fixes are necessary before proceeding with performance testing. So I hope you understand. Yeah, only we can go to the next step only when we are done with the smoke test. If the smoke test fails, we could not proceed with the next step. And if the smoke test is passed, we are good to go to the next step. So let me just run a, comp a smoke test. And then let's wait. So here I have a summary report which will tell me like whether everything works fine. I have a view results tree. So since this is a smoke test, I'm using running this in a GUI mode and to make and to show you how does it work. In fact, if it is a load test, I will definitely every time I will never use GUI mode and that is as always a best practice. In fact, we have discussed that in one of our previous videos. I never ever use the GUI mode to run a load test. I always prefer a non-GUI mode or CLI mode to run the load test. So now let's see. So we started the test and everything is working fine. Let's wait for some more seconds and then we will join back at the end of the test. So we have completed our smoke test and let's just make sure that there are no errors. So here we can see there are 0% of errors for all the transactions. And let's just bring all the transactions in order so that we can just check whether everything is working fine. And so this is how the smoke test. So now we are good to go to the next step since in the smoke test we have achieved 0% errors. There are no errors and everything works fine. So in your scenario, just make sure that the resources, the CPU, the memory, everything works fine. If they all work fine and there are no any spikes during the smoke test, please proceed to the smoke test. So in our next video, we will see how are we going to do our first load test using JMeter. So until I meet you in our next video, it's bye-bye from Vasan Shanmugam and Little Slaw.